Hey everyone, with Model 3 deliveries accelerating, I've been receiving more and more DMs via Twitter from people asking about what sorts of things they should be doing to prepare for the delivery of their Model 3 from a home charging standpoint. Now, I did talk about home charging in my previous video about OpenEVSE, and I do have my EV charging basics video from uh, last year, I think it was, but this video is going to be much more focused on Model 3 delivery and is going to be pretty much entirely North America specific since, well, that's where Model 3s are currently being delivered. So let's get started. First things first, let's talk about charging hardware. Every Tesla, including the Model 3, comes with Tesla's mobile connector, which is a combination 120 volt AC and 240 volt AC charging cable. The mobile connector is fairly universal with lots of adapters available from Tesla. As standard, the mobile connector will come with a NEMA 1450 and a NEMA 515 adapter. The mobile connector shown here is a Gen 1 mobile connector, so it's gonna look a little different than what you're gonna get with your Model 3, uh, the adapters for your Model 3's mobile connector will look, well, like this one here. It's important to note that with the current Gen 2 Tesla mobile connector, it does include a NEMA 1450 adapter, but that adapter is limited to 32 amps, which is about 7.6 kilowatt, instead of uh, 40 amps, which is the normal current limit of a 1450 outlet. The NEMA 515 adapter is meant for your standard 120 volt electrical outlet, and that'll provide about 12 amps. Uh, at 120 volts, so about 1.3 kilowatt. It'll take a really long time to charge your car with a 515 adapter, so unless your daily commute is very, very short, uh, I really don't advise depending on it for daily charging. The Model 3 Long Range, as well as the Long Range Dual Motor and Long Range Performance, basically all the versions that are being delivered as of when this video is posted, are capable of charging at up to 48 amps at 240 volts, which works out to about 11 and a half kilowatts. However, to utilize this full charging capability at home, it requires a dedicated 60 amp breaker and some kind of home charging solution like a Tesla wall connector. Uh, the mobile connector that comes with the car is not capable of delivering this much power. If 48 amp charging is what you're after and you don't want to buy a Tesla wall connector, your options are somewhat more limited. There aren't that many 48 amp or higher chargers available on the market. Um, and those that are available are significantly more expensive than Tesla's wall connector. If bumping up to 40 amp charging is all you're looking for though, you have a lot more options to choose from uh, in addition to the Tesla wall connector. There are charging stations available from Clipper Creek. There's the uh, Open EVSC stuff that I reviewed in a previous video, link to that is in the description. Juicebox is also pretty popular. And if you're only looking for 40 amps and that means that you have the option of just installing a NEMA 1450 outlet and plugging a 40 amp charging station into that, which also means that if your charging station goes down, you can still you know, unplug it and plug in your mobile connector. It gives you a lot of flexibility there. Or of course you can hardwire your, uh, your charging station. If using a non-Tesla specific charging station is your preference for versatility reasons, or if you wanna use a charging station that you already have at home, uh, well, there's nothing to worry about there because every Tesla comes with a J1772 to Tesla plug adapter that you can use to plug your Tesla in. This is how I have charged my Model S every day for the three, three or so years that I've owned it. Thanks to the mobile connector, home charging stations aren't strictly required, but they are nice to have, especially if, like me, you prefer keeping the mobile connector with the car in case you might need it when you're out and about or you know, make sure that you don't forget it when you're going on long trips. Having a dedicated charging station at home is nice because it means you don't have to deal with constantly unplugging your mobile connector, bundling it up and putting it in your car. The second sort of question I get very frequently is about the electrical setup. You know, what kind of outlet do I need? Do I need 240 volt? Can I use 120 volt? And I'd say that generally speaking for most people, it's probably gonna be best to have some sort of 240 volt charging in your garage to charge your car with. Unless your daily driving is very minimal, 120 volt charging probably won't be practical for replenishing your car overnight. If you already have a 240 volt outlet that you can use, great. Inspect the receptacle to identify its type and current rating. The type and rating are usually molded into the face of the receptacle as seen here. Uh, do note though that these receptacles were mounted upside down for specific reasons. Generally, these are be mounted the other way around. Receptacle type can also be identified by the physical configuration. Uh, Wikipedia has a really nice chart that lists all the different NEMA outlets. EV charging should be limited to 80% of the maximum current rating of the receptacle and breaker. So if you're looking at a 50 amp breaker and receptacle, then you'd be charging at 40 amps. If you have a 40 amp receptacle and breaker, then you'd be charging at 32 amps. And if you have a 30 amp receptacle and or breaker, then you'd be looking at charging at 24 amps and so on. For the most part, this is something that is automatically taken care of if you're using the correct mobile connector adapter purchased from Tesla. For an existing outlet, verify the condition of the wiring, that the outlet is wired properly, and connected to an appropriate circuit breaker. 
Just because you find an old 1450 outlet in your garage doesn't necessarily mean that it's connected to a 50 amp breaker or that the appropriate wiring was used to handle a 40 amp continuous load. In some regions, it's not unheard of to find a 1450 outlet wired to a 40 amp breaker, and you really have to watch out for that. Always be somewhat suspicious of old outlets, especially if you do not know the outlet's history, because poor wiring connections or a worn receptacle can produce significant heat and in some cases enough heat to partially melt the receptacle or damage your mobile connector or even start a fire. Monitor your charging sessions on unfamiliar outlets to make sure that things aren't getting too hot, and when in doubt, call a licensed electrician. It's fairly normal for cables and connectors to get warm, but if they're hot enough to be significantly uncomfortable to hold for more than 10 seconds or so, or if you smell burning, then you may have a problem and you should end your charging session and probably contact an electrician. If you don't already have a 240 volt outlet to work with, then you'll need to decide whether you want to charge using the mobile connector, a hardwired home charging station, or a home charging station that plugs into an outlet. Once you've made that decision and prior to electrical work being done, relocate anything like irrigation timers and stuff like that that might be in the way. If you're familiar with basic residential electric work, it's not a hard DIY to install an outlet or breaker or a charging station, uh, if you aren't familiar with electrical work, or if you're like me and you just don't like bending conduit, then please hire a licensed electrician. The cost to hire an electrician will vary depending on where you live and what sort of electrical work you need done, uh, but if you don't need any panel upgrades or any sub-panels or anything like that, around $400 to $500 to install a NEMA 1450 outlet is not unreasonable in California. If you've decided to install an outlet instead of using a hardwired charging station, make sure that you use quality outlets. Tesla actually recommends a couple 1450 outlets, um, but they are more expensive than your typical outlets. I'll leave a link in the description to uh, Tesla's page for that. Work with your installer to make sure that all of your outlets or hardwired charging equipment end up in the right place. Make sure to fit check things during the installation process to avoid rework. As a general rule, you'll want to plug your car in every night to charge it. Think of it kind of like a smartphone in this regard and only set your target state of charge above 90% if you actually need it. Plugging in your car every night, even if you don't necessarily need the added charge, is important because it gets you in the habit of plugging the car in so that you never find yourself in a situation to where you forgot. Ideally, you should try to keep most lithium-ion batteries between a 20% and 80% state of charge, but daily charging Teslas to 90% doesn't seem to be appreciably worse than 80% based on owner reports. Also keep in mind that the charge timer functionality is location based. So if you plug your car in at a new location, it will try to start charging immediately unless you have a charge timer set for that location. Finally, check with your electricity provider to get information about any EV friendly time of use billing schedules that they may have. In my case with Southern California Edison, for example, my household has a super off-peak rate period between 10 p.m. and 8 a.m. daily of only 12 cents per kilowatt hour during the summer cycle and 13 cents per kilowatt hour during the winter cycle that I schedule all of my EV charging for. Some utilities may have significantly shorter super off-peak charging windows, so take that into consideration when you're choosing how you want to set up your home charging. Well, that's about it for this video. As a reminder, if you happen to be interested in ordering either a performance Tesla Model 3 or any Tesla Model S or X, by September 16th, and you've found any of my videos useful, uh, maybe click the uh, referral link in the description below to receive free unlimited lifetime supercharging. After September 16th, that'll only be good for one year instead of lifetime. If you're interested in picking up any neat EV related shirts like this Gas Pumps of the Future shirt or my more recent Within Tolerance shirt, um, the link to my Teespring store is also in the description below. As usual, if you have any questions or comments, leave those in the comment section down below. I'll be active in there answering questions. Don't forget to rate and subscribe, and I'll see you later.